The Laughing Cavalier here, presenting to you another tale of these troubled times. And, yep, it's another unscripted video. I honestly was not expected to do one of these so soon, but I just had to react to this one. So, uh, here is an old article from 2015 from The Independent, titled TV and Films Top 8 Portrayals of King Henry VIII. Uh, this was done just before Wolf Hall came out. So, um, let's, let's see what their top 8 portrayals of Henry VIII are. So, I, I don't know if this is ranked at all, or it's just a random list of eight actors they found, but... Uh, first one is Charles Lawton. Acclaimed method actor Lawton set the acting bar high in 1933 with The Private Life of Henry VIII, which followed the king from the annulment of his first marriage in 1533 to his death in 1547. Um, it actually doesn't, it starts with the death of Anne Boleyn, but... Oh well. <laughs> Thanks to the famous banquet scene, Lawton was often served whole chickens and no cutlery by mischievous restaurateurs. And also spread a major inaccuracy in the, trying to claim that Henry VIII um, ate raw chicken wings all the time, which has even been featured in quite good films, which is inaccurate because he actually was quite a um, neat eater. Um, yeah, he was. I mean, other than the inaccuracies and some of the ridiculous things in that film, he's not a bad choice for Henry VIII. But uh, uh, then it starts to sort of uh, get a bit, bit ridiculous. The second choice is Homer Simpson. <laughs> oh, God. It makes me think that the people who wrote this just Googled Henry VIII and just put somebody, whoever they thought they could find. <laughs> so television's favourite cartoon dad appeared as Henry VIII in a 2004 episode of The Simpsons called Magical History Tour, in which Bar Marge tells Bart and Milhouse stories from history because Springfield's library has binned all its books. Bart, as the male heir to the king's death before, talked over in his dreams. Um, do, I, do I even need to say how that's not... You know, perhaps should not be on a list of <laughs> portrayals of Henry VIII. <sighs> and then it gets worse. Number three, Jonathan Rees Myers. Irishman Rees Myers was nominated for a Golden Globe and won an Emmy for his Henry in the Tudors, which ran for four seasons until 2010. His <laughs> slight physique, yeah, that's, that's one way to put it, and whimsical portrayal. Yeah, I mean, there's nothing more whimsical than seeing half the court get beheaded. <laughs> Puzzled, though, is more used to the larger-than-life cliché, or more puzzled by the fact that he's thin for the entire series, when when time we get to season four, he should be massive, but he isn't. <laughs> oh, I've, I've lost track of what number up to, but uh, next one is Sidney James <laughs> from Carry On. The Tudors get the slapstick treatment in 1971's Carry On Henry, in which Sid James' monarch pursues Barbara Windsor because his eighth wife, Marie of Normandy, won't stop eating garlic. Kenneth Williams hands up as Cromwell. Yeah, I, I, you've, you've just found people who played Henry VIII. You've not even gone, yeah, where, where is Keith Michelle? Where's Richard Burton? All the kind of the famous ones. I mean, maybe maybe they might be a bit further down. And uh, next one is, uh, it's, it's Rowan Atkinson. <laughs> this veteran of historical comedy, as Edmund Blackadder, is probably more famous worldwide than Mr. Bean. But he is to delve into the costume department again when he guesses Henry VIII in an episode of CBBC's Horrible Histories to be screened later this year. So, so let me get this straight. You've put Rowan Atkinson on a list of greatest actors to portray Henry VIII when you haven't even seen it yet. And if you don't know what they're doing, they're referring to the, um, the song he sung in one of the TV things. I've not watched the TV show of Horrible Histories. I only ever used to read the comic books. Um, including the second one, which has a picture on the front cover of Catherine Howard's severed head. So, <laughs> I love how you know how tame British children's media is in this country. Uh, and then, of course, my favourite actor who was portrayed Henry VIII, unknown actor. <laughs> He's truly the greatest. He played Sherlock Holmes. He was really good. Shakespeare's Henry VIII was first performed in 1613, a decade after the death of Henry's daughter Elizabeth I. Pity the lead actor as his reputation, a cannon shot during a show at the original Globe Theatre, ignited the thatch and burned the building to the ground. See, that's an interesting story, but should that really be on the list of you know, top eight portrayals of Henry VIII? Oh, now we get on to some more decent ones. Damien Lewis. Most recently seen in TV for The Homeland, Lewis stars in the six-part Wolf Hall, starting on BBC Two on Wednesday at 9pm. Based on Hilary Mantle's two award-winning novels charting the rise of Thomas Cromwell from back to his son to minister, Lewis says he identifies with Henry's mood swings because he once suffered depression after a car crash. Now, I, should, um, I know a lot of people have been tasked me to review Wolf Hall, which I will do one day, don't worry. And uh, actually, this is one of the few on the list I do agree with. Again, however, this is before it's aired, so how do you know his portrayal is good? And I think this is the, yep, this is the final one, Robert Shaw. Shaw played a hearty Henry in the 1966 film A Man for All Seasons, in which Paul Schofield won the Best Actor Oscar for his portrayal of the martyr to Thomas More. 
Shaw bestowed the king with a certain blue-eyed menace, but is always best known for his role as an assassin in From Russia with Love and as Quint in Jaws. And again, he's probably the second, third one I actually agree with. Uh, I, if I had to rank my favourite Henry's, Keith Michelle's number one, and I probably would actually put Robert Shaw as number two. He was really good as Henry, particularly if there's that one scene uh, when he's going to go see Sir Thomas More and he j- jumps off the bar. He doesn't say a word, he just sort of looks looks down because he sinks half into the mud and then looks angrily at his courtiers who are just sort of left wondering, you know, do we laugh, do we, <laughs> what do we do? And then he starts laughing, they sort of nervously laugh on oh, with him, it's amazing. <laughs> but yeah, um... So I thought writers of period dramas are bad. I think perhaps journalists should stay away from history too if this list is anything to go by. So anyway, sorry, another quick video. But uh, I say if anybody um, wants to send me any really bad Tudor articles, then I do have a Twitter account that I don't use very much. But you can always send it to me on there. And yeah, maybe I could do some more reaction videos to really bad Tudor articles in the media. In the meantime, this has been The Laughing Cavalier, wishing you a good day.